Hi, John McElroy here. I'm speaking today with Fred LaSalle. He's the president and chief executive officer of Borg Warner, which just completed its investor day, announcing its strategy. And what a strategy. Fred, thanks for taking the time to bring us all up to speed with what you guys are doing. Always a pleasure, John. So what you really announced today is you're pivoting Borg Warner from a combustion company to one that will be able to supply components and the like for electric vehicles. Uh, my question is, uh, why are you putting such a big push into EVs right now with the market still rather immature? You know, this, this is for us the logical next step of what we've been building over the past years. Remember in 2015, we started looking at electrification and we saw that trend coming, started with the acquisition of Remy, we then acquired Zefcon. Uh, we have increased our focus on cash uh, between 15 and, and, and now around 17, because we knew that cash was gonna be very important for our, for, for our business and the firepower of M&A. <clears throat> with the acquisition of Delphi, we then got, which closed last October, we got scale in electronics, in power electronics and software. Borg Warner is close to a thousand engineer in software. Uh, so, you know, it is a logical next step. With, with our basis and foundation, we're ready to accelerate. Now we have all the building pieces to accelerate. And we've done that before. John, you know that. Uh, in the in end of the 90s, we, we have accelerated profitable growth with turbochargers. When we bought 3K and Schwitzer, put it together, we moved the turbo business from about 2 million of turbos that we, that we bought back then to close to 13 or 14 million of turbos in, in 2019, right? And we've done that several times. Now we're doing that in e-products. It's the same DNA of the company to be ready when the market is ready. And we feel that today is the time. Today is the time to accelerate. We have all the building blocks uh, ready and the market is calling for us to accelerate too. What I find so fascinating as you build this process or build the capabilities is that even you all have said that you're not going to break even on this business until 2024. Uh -huh. how, did, how did you get your board of directors and how do you get your shareholders to go along with a business that's not going to pay off for several years yet? Well, we're managing the business with a long-term view and we're managing the business with return on invested capital. And in any program, you start, depending on the ramp up, you start by investing and you get the return on invested capital at a certain period of time. And that's what we've presented today. Breaking even in, in electric vehicle in 2024 is actually pretty much our view. And it's, it's, it's a view that is backed with program that we're quoting, program that we're winning, and return on invested capital that was, that was announced uh, uh, to the board and, and agreed, agreed with the board. So. All that is perfectly part of the plan. One of the other parts of your strategy, of course, uh, uh, uninvesting or divesting businesses uh, so that you can take that money in and, and put it into your EV front. Um, I, I'm presuming that the businesses that you want to divest are probably involved in combustion technology. Mm -hmm. My question is, are you going to be able to find buyers for that? And will you be able to get a good price in selling those businesses? Mm -hmm. So... What we're going to do, John, is we're going to manage our portfolio. We've always, always said that this is an active management process for us, including Borg Warner product lines and X Delphi product lines. So we're going to look at whether we have connections from a technology standpoint between some of the combustion assets into electric vehicle. We're going to look at whether those product lines would be better staying with Borg Warner or would be better being owned by somebody else. We're gonna look at the margin profile, the cash generation profile, and that's how we're gonna make those decisions. There's still good business. Though some of those businesses might be better off uh, 
with another owner uh, than us. Uh, they're still good business. Um, and, you know, we have to do that in order to accelerate the shift towards electrification, which we think is really profound and which we think we can play a big, we can have a big impact in making the world cleaner and more energy efficient. It's our vision. And we put that vision in motion right now with an acceleration towards EVs. This plan, and you've seen the, you've seen the investor there, get, has a vision of full, of full 2030 and a set of actions between now and 2025 on organic action, inorganic action, in light vehicle, in commercial vehicle, and dispositions. And we will adjust those, this plan. This plan is flexible. It's not set in stone. If we want to move faster, we can move faster. If we, think, if we see things changing from a market dynamic standpoint, we can adjust the plan. Like any good plan, it has a vision. It has all the building blocks ready. And it is flexible. Yeah, good strategy, I would say. Um, you've talked to uh, wanting to do another two to $3 billion in acquisitions. Mm -hmm. Can you give us a hint at what kind of technologies or businesses that you'd like to acquire? Yeah, so we will be, we will be focused as we've always been into bringing the best technology into the company. We are not into uh, uh, having acquisition for, for acquisition's sake or market share's sake. We're laser focused on technology and we'll be laser focused on technology that is giving us efficiency within our product or across our products in a battery electric vehicle being light vehicle or commercial vehicle. It can be technology, can be scale in a certain product line Scale is extremely important. You can have a great product. If you don't have scale, it's not going to work. Customer needs scale. We need scale for competitiveness too. And uh, we are going to focus into making sure that we bring efficiency into a battery electric vehicle wherever those electrons flow. John, we're one of the only ones in the world that can say that we have products from stationary fast charging to onboard charging, to battery packs, battery management system, battery coolant heater, cabin heaters, flowing down to inverter, potentially DC-DC converter, motor, and moving the wheels. So we understand all that, all that, I would say, supply chain of electrons. And we want to use as little electrons as possible in order for our customer to use those electrons to do other things that are important for the end customers, also like autonomous driving, like connected cars, all these new trends don't come from free, for free. Our role here is to be, to be working on the efficiency of the, of the powertrain, of the electric powertrain. Like we did for years on the combustion powertrain, we now apply that to an electric side with a position of strength from a technology and talent perspective. That will be the focus on what we're doing in the future. And that's where we're going to target MA going forward. Maybe one more, one more thing on MA. Delphi was a big MA. And it, it's a complex integration, which is, by the way, working very, very well. Uh, all the lights are green from this integration standpoint. The MA that we have focused, that we will be focusing towards in the future, are more what I would say Acasol like, which is an acquisition that is pending, smaller in size, uh, single product, easy to integrate and put into a business unit. That's how you should think about where we're going next into an m and strategy. Let's pour in a little bit more on Akasol then. Very interesting acquisition that you did. It's a uh, battery pack maker based in Europe. Yet in the US, you also have a joint venture with Romeo Power, mm -hmm. which sounds to me doing almost the same sort of thing. Mm -hmm. How did that work out? And is, is this just a matter of opportunity, how things worked out, where in one case you have an acquisition, in the other case you have a joint venture? 
Mm -hmm. So we are committed to the battery pack business. We think that, especially in commercial vehicle, this is the heart of the uh, the heart of the electrification. And so we are we are with Romeo, and we are very happy with what we saw with Acasol, and we're going to work those things in order to give the best products for our customers. And we're very happy with what we see with, with Acasol from a cell agnosticism, either cylindrical or patch or prismatic, um, a, a lot of focus into uh, power density efficiency versus cost versus volumetric of the battery pack, volume of the battery pack versus weight of the battery pack. We really like what we saw over there, and I think their customer portfolio of blue chip customers starting in Europe, but also uh, being more global in a sense, I think are, the, are a very important proof that, that they are the forefront of technology and everything that we've seen uh, pro proves that. Fred, as you know, uh, automakers are always making make and buy decisions, whether they should make something in the house or buy it from suppliers. Right now, the, the EV industry is very immature, not a lot of scale for a, a lot of automakers. So they're buying. Going forward, as this really starts to ramp up, how do you make sure, how do you entice the OEMs to buy from you rather than take it in-house? Mm -hmm. I think, John, it's, it's, it's a matter of having better technologies. It's a matter of having bigger scale. It's a matter of being competitive. If you have the right technology, if you have scale, which is what we have, and if you are um, manufacturing it the right way locally and give, give um, value to your customer, they, they, the, 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 the outsourcing will come. Actually, we showed this morning that about 60% of the motors will be outsourced. Some customers are going to insource some. Within one customer, you're going to see that they will insource some motors, they will outsource some motors. Uh, power electronics, electronic software, very much outsourced because the speed at which the technology changes, the importance of scale in order to manage electronic suppliers <clears throat> is absolutely important. So I would not. You know, there is a lot of moving pieces in insourcing, outsourcing. What I would say is first, you need to be a, able to supply a system. We are. You need to be able to talk system with your, supply, with your customer. Because if the customer wants to make a buy, they have to have a buy option. And we are a buy option. Once you have that discussion, if the customer wants to make in-house, I've learned over the past... 30 plus years in this business that it's not super smart to fight with your customer. If they want to make a system in-house, you need to be at their service to provide the subsystem that they need. And that's how we're gonna, that's how we're gonna move. Insourcing, outsourcing depends what you do, outsource or insource, where you do it. Some customers are gonna insource uh, some products in Europe, for example, we're saying that, but outsource in China. Uh, some will start with outsourcing and then insource. Some start with insourcing and then outsource. We have an example in Europe where a customer started to insource motor and now we're doing it. So it's not a one size fits all. And when you look at what we presented today, the total available market for electrified product, especially in BEV, is so big that uh, I am not worrying about our ability to win business right now. And you heard Stefan talk this morning more precisely. We have so many requests coming from all customers around the world that our um, dilemma right now is to manage the priorities. So last question, Fred. Uh, one of the things that you talked about in your investor meeting today is sustainability. Mm -hmm. I'm told right now that automakers are asking suppliers like Borg Warner to sign a commitment to be carbon neutral by 2039 
or you don't get the contract. Are you running into that? And is that one of the reasons why you're pushing on sustainability? The reason why we're pushing on sustainability, because it's the right thing to do. It's the right thing to do for our business. It's the right thing to do to align the business with all the external factors that also are, 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 are known by, by, by most of us, right? The raise, rise in, in temperature, regulation, regulation pressure. And it's the right thing to do because our people want it. Our talent want it. The talent that we need to attract want it. It's just the right thing to do for our business. It's going to create value over time. What we're doing on sustainability absolutely fits our vision of a clean, energy-efficient world. If we would not be at the forefront of sustainability with such a vision, it would be a failure, failure on our part. So if you, take, if you take ESG and break it into pieces, the E is what product we make. The product we make, make the world cleaner and more energy-efficient even more the product that we will make in the battery electric vehicle. How we make those products is core to what we do too. And we've announced this morning carbon neutrality by 2035. Now on the S, the S with the beliefs that we live in Borgwana is very natural. DNI and corporate social responsibility is something that we do naturally. We actually bringing some of those things in in, uh, in, in the discussion that we have with our managers and managers with, with their people. The inclusion, the respect, the how you do business within Borg Warner, how you interact with the outside world, something that is very, very important to us. So it's, it's just natural for us to be at the forefront of sustainability. That's what we do for a living. Fred, I gotta tell you, it's very, Fascinating, actually, to watch as you take this old traditional supplier company that's been around for a hundred years and transition it into a totally new type of company. It's going to be a lot of fun to watch that. It's going to be a, a lot of fun, and you know what I what, what I what I think is that Tox does not electrify vehicles. It takes expertise. It takes scale. It takes customer intimacy and networks. It takes management courage and also a lot of management humility. Knowing that you don't know everything, but knowing that we will manage it. The team is ready. We have, we have each of those elements. So we are now in an execution mode. Execution that takes great technology at the right time for profitable growth. That's Borgwarner's DNA. That has always been Borgwarner's DNA. And that's what we're doing now with e-products, with the foundation that we've built over the past six years. It's gonna be extremely exciting. Fred LaSalle, thanks for your time again. Thank you, John.